Shamai Kroiso, hello and welcome to another episode of The Bluebird's Nest. Neith Aradair Gleishon. This episode again is sponsored by Dragon Bet, our proud betting partners, who are days away now, I believe, uh, from launching their brand new app that's really going to provide opportunity in the betting markets across the JD Cymru Leagues. We're really looking forward to seeing it. Uh, what we'd like to advise you to do, encourage you to do, is give them a follow on social media and await that launch. This week's episode, I'm delighted to welcome the Flying Kiwi, uh, Zach Jones. Welcome to, or should I say, Kiora. Welcome <laughs> to, uh, to this week's episode. Thanks for having me, mate. Thank you. No, great. Thank you for your, your time for this. Um, I must say, i got to go back to the first moment I heard. It was actually Devs who told me, we're signing a New Zealander, uh, a goalkeeper. And from my own personal experiences, I actually played, believe it or not, about, gosh, nearly 20 years ago now in New Zealand. They spent some some months over there and the goalkeepers were ginormous, to say the least. All the goalkeepers. <laughs> so I was expecting you to walk in, big Kiwi, six foot five, uh, you know, sort of second row sort of physique. <laughs> Um, but I must say you're far more athletic and agile than the keepers I ever played against for um, uh, Fencibles United, I turned out for back in the day. Marty Fencibles. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of those guys. Um, yeah. You turn up, like I've told you, you're more of an outside centre, uh, far more uh, physique appropriate to, to Welsh League football, I suppose. Um, <laughs> obviously, growing up in New Zealand then, going back all those years in a rugby mad country you know i found that i was over there with the british lions with it at the time so it was even more sort of heightened how much rugby was at the forefront of, yeah. of sport there what was that like then growing up have you always played football pretty much i mean obviously when you're younger you play a lot of sports mm. um so rugby was one of them but i played pretty much as much sport as i could any sport um but yeah rugby mad country um but surprisingly in school you actually see that football is more popular than rugby i would say okay. you see a lot more people picking up a football um rather than a rugby ball um but then again you get i mean the amount of talent you can see coming from rugby in our countries is a joke so <laughs> it's um, very popular but yeah for me it was i think i was around 10 years old when i started playing football but obviously managing it with a lot of other sports but yeah um yeah for me it was always football I always loved it um mum obviously loved that I was staying away from rugby and getting out of <laughs> protecting my head um <laughs> yeah so mum was very happy with that choice yeah um, we've always yeah, always been football yeah. always as a goalkeeper then no at the start obviously when you're younger you kind of mm -hmm. rotate a lot and um play all sorts of positions but when I rotated into goal i yeah loved it so ended up staying there so pretty much yeah pretty much um all of the years have been in goal oh okay fair enough um yeah. and that from 10 years then you had you've had a bit of an adventure of a career you've you've moved clubs you've progressed really well across um clubs across new zealand but mainly at wellington phoenix who currently play in the in the a league so mm -hmm. playing against teams in australia as well what what was that like, that experience playing in that sort of standard? Yeah, it was great for me. Obviously, um, I never actually had a competitive game for them, but sat on the bench a lot. Well, not a lot, but towards the end of yeah. when I was there, I was sitting on the bench, um, which was a great experience. Obviously, yeah, the A-League is a really good standard. Um, you see a lot of a lot of young boys kind of progress into Europe um, and a lot of older kind of players mm -hmm. maybe coming to Australia for a, you know, a bit of retirement. Um, see a lot of ex Premier League players going you know, to coming for the lifestyle, which is great. I mean, we had a few in our team, um, which was really good for my development as well. Um, so yeah, love my time there. Um, yeah, it was really, really good for my development as a as a young player. Who are those? I'm sure everyone's waiting now for you to say who are those experts. I know Stephen Taylor, ex New Zealand. Uh, sorry, ex. Well, he was Newcastle, and he was pretty much an England under twenty one regular. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Never had a first team cap, a senior cap with England. But did did you cross paths with Stephen? Yes, yeah, I was there when um when Stevie was there. So 
I was there for for a good two years with him. Okay. Um, Gary Hooper as well from Norwich. Mostly he he was there for a bit. So there was a few players. Um, but yeah, no. Um, it's great to have those characters around, like Stephen Taylor. He's he's a top bloke. Um, really helped help the younger boys. Really put his arm around us. Mm -hmm. Um and showed his experience um but was also you know always loved a bit of banter and he was always a <laughs> guy firing jokes around yeah um, which so, always made a bit of a laugh the one uh, question i'd want to ask him is about that infamous uh handball slash chest uh, <laughs> he, took on the line. That was he does it all the time in training as well really? he, he's, yeah in the small side of games he was always throwing his body all over the place <laughs> there was always cool. arms involved yeah that's amazing. And obviously, like I mentioned, he was infamous playing. I think he had about five, six years playing for the under twenty ones. Mm. You also got capped at age grade level. Um, I think seventy. You made your debut for international under seventeen, and then the under twenties. What was that experience like? Oh, amazing! I mean, yeah, you dream of representing your country. Um, obviously, the next goal was the national team, but um. Yeah, no, age the it was amazing. It was really surreal. Um I never when I first got caught up, I never really thought I was in and around that that kind of setup. I wasn't really in the right, I guess, team to to be there. Um but yeah, no, once I was once I was there, I loved every bit of it. I mean, it's just an inexperience I'll never forget. I mean, going to a World Cup is at any age group is yeah it's amazing i mean you get you get the full experience um mm. of what it would be like to you know be in that real that senior team yeah. um but no it's amazing it's something i'll never forget and and um yeah yeah just oh, really oh, good where was that world cup what year was that so oh god you jog my memory a bit um <laughs> so the first one under 17 world cup was in india I assume that would have been 2017 because I'm born in 2000. So I hope it's around then. Um, and that was that was definitely a, a bit of an eye opener going to India. Um, obviously, you, you don't get to see that side of the of the country in terms of like the slums and the, the poverty around there. I mean, so that was definitely an eye opener to us. Um, especially at such a young age. Right. And then we had the under twenties World Cup was in Poland as well. Oh, okay. Um, so that was pretty cool as well. You know, playing in those massive stadiums. Mm -hmm. I mean it's it's pretty amazing. And that led you to Wales, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, I find it fascinating, you know, when uh, players from all over the world end up in Wales. What brought you to Wales? So uh, well initially I didn't didn't really have any intentions of staying in wales i mean i came over for the sole purpose of football i i mean um, i thought i'd done as much as i could in in new zealand and to develop i i had to come overseas so i first i moved over um and i have family in in living in swansea oh, okay um, through my my grandfather was welsh so his his side of the family was um always been in swansea so i was staying with them um when I first arrived, um, quarantining and oh. waiting for my COVID results to come back, so mm. I could, so I could go travel a little bit, um, and then all of a sudden, an opportunity through the old manager Nicky um, came about through a contact I had in, in Belgium, and and yeah, just he um, he asked me to come down for a for a trial kind of session with him, and yeah, he ended up staying. Fantastic, and that obviously that was at the start of twenty twenty two. But only recently you actually made your your debut uh, in the Cymru Prem. How did you find that then? What was the sort of comparison then to what you'd previously played at? It's it's a lot different. Um, it's you know it's the it's a very physical league. It's um yeah, I would say that would be the biggest the biggest difference in terms of what I've played at before and. And what this is is the physicality of the league and how kind of different you have to play a little bit. Um, in New Zealand, it's a, the pace is a little bit slower, but it's more technical. But um, but no, I've enjoyed it. I've I've loved the first the first few games I've I've had here, and um, yeah, I'm just just soaking it all in, and you know, just trying to keep keep putting my my name out there to play.
Awesome. Fantastic. Fair play. Um, and you mentioned you first settled down in Swansea, but now you are down in Pembrokeshire, in Haverford West, yeah. uh, living with Jordan Davis, our, our stri- one of our strikers at the club. I've got to ask, uh, what's life with Jordan like? <laughs> it's a roller coaster, mate. He's, he's, <laughs> he's sometimes he's unbelievable to live with. He's and then sometimes he's a pain in the ass. I must say. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's uh, we get along really well, me and Jordan. So it's yeah. uh, it's good. It's um, it's a lot of fun living together, and um, now we work well. A little dynamic yeah. duo. It's it's strange. Opposites attract sometimes. Well, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> very different characters, and and we'll yeah. come on to that shortly. And I got a couple of questions that might almost in a Mister and Mrs. style, I think, about yeah. uh, around the household. But mm. excellent. Appreciate that sort of background summary and your journey. And it's excellent to hear that you've you've come down to us of the Bluebirds. Um, quick fire question time now, then. So just again to give opportunities for for those watching along or listening along on the podcast. To get to know you a little bit more, uh, general ones to begin with. Your favorite TV program? Ooh, TV program. I would have to say Peaky Blinders for me. Okay. Yeah. Is that available in New Zealand? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is. No, very popular. Fantastic. Okay. Mm. Uh, favorite film? Probably one I watched recently again. Um, Shutter Island. I love that film. Yeah. Okay, okay, and I've seen that one myself. Music genre, so any favorite bands or singers? Ooh, I'll probably go mainstream. I'll probably have to say Drake. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, I always remember seeing Jack Johnson performing Buskin in Auckland once. There you and go. I was like, oh, this guy's going to be huge. He's going to be huge. And literally within months, he, he was. He was doing the. Curious George soundtrack, and he just took off. But that, uh, brilliant that together album, I must admit, it's probably uh, around the house here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, is he North Island or South Island? I could not tell you. Oh, I have no idea, unfortunately. He did well from a, from a busker to a global. Well, he was at one point quite a, a superstar. Okay. Um, favorite drinks now, alcoholic and non alcoholic. What's Ooh. your tip? Alcoholic. Um, oh, it's a tough one. I would probably go with a, a nice craft beer. Okay. Um, non-alcoholic, definitely a coffee. I'm a big coffee person in the morning. Nice. Can't nice. go without my coffee. Wyndham was on the episode last week, and he said he just invested in a brand new kettle down at the Nest shop. You'll have to call in and... Uh, really? Yeah, no, definitely. It's only a short walk away. I'll have to get a free coffee. And I yeah, to... I've been waiting for people to say they've been calling in. I wonder what his coffee skills are like. Yeah. <laughs> um, early bird or night owl? Definitely early bird, me. Nice. Yeah, I get definitely get that from my mum. Me and her are definitely early birds. My, yeah. my dad and my sister are the complete opposite. <laughs> Brilliant. And is that up and at them, up the gym, or just... Love just up, up, yeah, just up having to do something. You know, I, I like to do stuff in the morning, keep myself busy. Um, so yeah, if that's the gym or if it's something else, yeah. Uh, no doubt Jordan will be a future guest, but is he the same? No, complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> complete opposite. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Okay. Um, you're well traveled, so where's your favorite holiday destination? Ooh, that's a good question. Um I'll probably go with, even though it's close, Australia is, is quite nice. I mean, yeah. the heat's just, you can't beat it really. It's um, so much nicer than New Zealand in terms of the weather. So yeah. I'd have to say Australia. Anywhere in particular, the Gold Coast. I'm Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, Gold Coast is lovely. Yeah. Stunning. Okay. Um, other sports, and any particular sports you like playing or, or supporting? I do like. I used to play a lot of golf back home, so I'll, I'll say golf. Um, but I love watching any sport, really. Um, the tennis at the moment, I'm I'm enjoying watching. Um, watch, I love watching Nick Kyrgios at the moment, so he's, yeah. he's definitely one of my favourites. But yeah, tennis. He's certainly one to watch. He's a little bit controversial, but yeah, he's yeah. A must watch Tally fair play. Yeah. Okay, uh, we must have to have a, a golf knock at some time. I know there's a, a number yeah. of boys getting into it in a big way now, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I think one uh, free Saturday, it'll be a few of us on the course somewhere, perhaps. Yeah, no, I like that. 
um, a meal now then with someone dead or alive, it could be absolutely anyone for any reason, who would you choose? Poor, oh, that's another great question. Um, I'll probably go with my football idol, Peter Cech. I would probably ever love to ever sit down with him um, yep. and pick his brain. So I'll say, um, yeah, Peter Cech. Okay. Now then, household, I can probably guess this. Who's the tidiest? <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, nah, definitely me. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> I'm probably the same. Well, I don't know about this. Who's the best cook? <laughs> I don't know if Jordan knows, if Jordan knows what a frying pan is. but um, yeah, <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, definitely me in terms of that. I'm always in the kitchen. Um, he does the dishes, though, so you yeah, can do that. Oh, that's not too bad. As long as he's pulling <laughs> his weight a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll have his own back one day, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, match day now then. So get to the ground. What are you, or perhaps before the ground, pre-match rituals? Any uh, sort of things you always do? Not, oh, there's not too many. I don't like to have too many because I feel like that would just, it would play on your mind too much. But um, no, just the basic kind of right sock on, then left sock and left, right boot first. Yeah. Um, but nothing too, you know, nothing too big because otherwise I think it would just play on my mind too much. Yeah, yeah. it's surprising how just right then left people, little things like that. It's almost everybody's got that. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a funny one, but... um. No, it seems mm. to work. So, okay. Um, toughest opponent you've ever faced on the pitch? Tough question. Um, I would probably have to say Phil Foden. Really? Okay. In, Is that in the World in Cup the, in the age groups. Yeah, we had a we played him in a friendly, and he was yeah he was pretty impressive. You could tell he was going to be a be a superstar from such a young age. Yeah. So was that. The under seventeen, under seventeens, yeah. So we had a friendly with them before our World Cup, and yeah, there was a lot of lot of players who are now playing in the, yeah, in the Premier League the, now. Um, the year they won the World Cup, I believe, was it? The yes. under yeah, yeah, they won it. Yeah, yeah. Where was that then? Where did you play them? We played them in India um, about a week out before our our first game, I think. But yeah, they had the likes of Hudson Adoy and mm. you know Conor Gallagher, all those players, Smith Rowe. They were very good. Um, They've gone on to do relatively good things, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've done all right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Forden, not a bad one to come back at that. <laughs> now, since uh, coming to the club then, what's been your favourite moment? Probably have to say making making my, my first appearance, definitely. Um, look, it was probably a long time I've waited for it. So, no, I was happy to get out on the pitch finally and show what I can do. Excellent. Um, so definitely that. Good stuff. I thought you would have, would have responded with that one. <laughs> now then, so this is a, a question I've posed to everybody so far. Uh, your dream team from from the club, it can be staff, it can be players, and it can be for any reason. It doesn't have to be the best five players. And going on recent episode, it doesn't even have to include a goalkeeper. If you want to play rush goalkeeper. Oh, I don't agree with that. But I didn't think you would. You're welcome <laughs> to put yourself in the team as well. Yeah, go on. I'll put... I put myself in net. Um, I'll probably have to say Jazz at the back. I mean, he doesn't really need an explanation as to why he's in the team. Um, ooh, I think I'll go two in midfield. I'll probably go. I'll go attacking with Vili and and Henry in the midfield to create for me. Nice. And then I I think I have to put my flatmate in. I have to put Jordan. <laughs> Or else I won't hear the end of that. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> I wondered whether you drop him. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I'll stay clear of that. that that's a good team, that. That's a decent <laughs> team. I like that one. There's good balance there. Excellent. Thank you for that, Zach. Um, now it comes to the part where we look at the predictions league we've got going on with the club 1899 members. Last week, Phil Lutas got four out of six results correct which means he now sits top of the leaderboard with four points. Uh, obviously, a point being for each correct match result. And we're still waiting for that elusive uh, correct score, which would give someone three points. So this week, we've got Jason Thomas, another 1899 member, who's gone for Flint to win against Aberystwyth, 2-0. Newtown to draw with Connors Key, one all. Abus to lose at home to Met, 3-1. Bala to win, 4-1. A draw for Hub for West at TNS, two all, and Penabon two, Carnarvon two. 
So, as I mentioned, it's uh, a predictions league that's uh, involving all of our 1899 membership members. Uh, please visit the website using the QR code on screen or via the social media and take a look at what that involves and how to get involved. Our next fixture this weekend sees us back on the road up to Oswestry, where we're taking on the defending league champions and undefeated TNS, which is actually live on, on the telly this week. So that'll be going out to a global audience. So no doubt uh, there'll be a few few avid watchers down in New Zealand there on Saturday the 10th at 5.30. Zach, final question to you now then. I've seen from how you've been at the club, you're, you've become a bit of a role model, if I'm honest, for a lot of the academy players. I must, And it's, it's often mentioned how good you are, how interactive you are with the, the young goalkeepers in particular across the academy, with your own development, you know, from, from a young age as a goalkeeper and things. What advice would you give them? Look, I mean, I mean, obviously the obvious one is is a lot of hard work. Um, you you won't really get anywhere without without a lot of hard work and a lot of hours. Um, so I would say, yeah, you know, a lot of hard work. Keep working, um, and don't worry about setbacks and deal with setbacks and as as positively as you can and try and move on from them and use them as a as a way to to kind of to come back and um, be back stronger and don't don't kind of think about the setbacks and um oh god i've lost my train of thought to be honest i love it the very wise words from you there from a young man yourself very wise words and i know a number of them who were often by the tunnel i see them and they all oh, give get a, get a high five off zach and you know, it goes a long way. It's it seen, you know, you, you give your time for them to, to engage with them. And it's great to see and keep it up, I suppose. And yeah. DNS this weekend, looking forward to it. Yeah, no, buzzing. I mean, you've got to relish these these big games and, and enjoy them. I mean, it's, it's going to be a challenge for us, but it's a challenge all the boys are, are, are buzzing for. And yeah, can't wait to, to get on the pitch. Excellent. Love it. Zach, really appreciate your time, mate. I'll leave you go back to uh, Boss and Jordan around the house there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I'll mate. Appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. And I'll see you soon, buddy. Perfect.